This is part two of the lecture on venomous snakes in the United States. And uh, in this lecture, we will talk about coral snakes and uh, their envenomation and uh, management of snake bites in general in the field and in the hospital setting. And then we have a quick summary slide. About 1 in 100 venomous bites in the United States is caused by coral snakes. And an uh, important thing to remember is that for the United States coral snakes, uh, to distinguish the coral snake, the venomous coral snake, from a non-venomous types, um, you need to remember that their red band should be bordered by the yellow stripes. Uh, we use a saying to remember this, red on yellow will kill a fellow, red on black, venom lack. Um, so uh, coral snakes have very potent uh, venom and uh, actually the full-grown coral snake carries enough venom to kill four to five human adults. Uh, only the Mojave rattlesnakes, uh, rattlesnake is more dangerous. However, the good news is that coral snakes uh, have short fixed fangs, uh, so they actually need to latch onto you and kind of chew for a while to release enough venom to cause significant envenomation. They are also pretty shy snakes, um, so that's probably part of the reason why we see um, so much uh, fewer bites by them in the United States. The elapid venom is less complex but more potent than the one found in uh, most of the pit vipers. Um, the venom contains neurotoxins, and we've talked about that, um, and then also hyaluronidases and uh, toxins that cause cytotoxic effect. Um, so the important thing to consider with coral snake envenomation is the effects may be delayed up to 12 hours, um, and same thing with a mild envenomation. So you get just some localized uh, swelling, some pain, no systemic symptoms, and then with more severe envenomations, um, you start getting any of the systemic symptoms we talked about. This can include also nausea, vomiting, headaches, uh, altered mental status, neurological symptoms, and also respiratory distress. Remember, the neurotoxins can cause the paralysis of your diaphragm. Coral snakes are a bit different from the pit viper of animations because a lot of times in the beginning uh, the bite marks can look very harmless, barely seen. Uh, however, you want to evacuate these people early on uh, because uh, uh, the symptoms can progress quite rapidly. It can be very severe due to the neurotoxin. Um, so what is the treatment in the field? Uh, first of all, you should look for puncture wounds to make sure there was an actual um, possibility of envenomations. And uh, really, snake bites cannot be treated in the field, so do not waste your time. Evacuate the patient as quickly as you can. And take a picture of the snake if it is safe to do so, because identification of the snake would be helpful later on. And... Uh, one of the things you can consider is possibly immobilizing the extremity that it was bit. You should not attempt uh, placing tourniquets, ice packs, ext using extrication kits uh, like the Sawyer uh, extrication kit, or using any electric shock, alcohol suction, incision, etc. None of this have been shown to work in uh, the snakes found in the United States. So in terms of the treatment, support the ABCs, uh, airway breathing circulation. You want to give supportive care. That's your fluid replacement, blood product as needed, pain control, vasopressors if the patient is in shock and not responsive to fluid boluses. In terms of the blood work, uh, send off your CBC, basic metabolic panel, coagulation, type and screen, CPK to check for rhabdomyolysis. Uh, local wound care is important to update the tetanus, immobilize and elevate the extremities, uh, and frequently reevaluate. It is possible that the patient might develop compartment syndrome. Antivenom for moderate to severe envenomations, a worsening local tissue injury is recommended, and you should be calling your poison center for this. 
Antivenom is the most definitive treatment for snake bite and venomations for the pit vipers. We mostly use Crofab antivenom. However, there are actually two antivenoms that are approved by the FDA for the use in the United States. Uh, that's a Crofab, and, uh, which is uh, ovine derived, and it's four to six vials. Uh, and you might need to possibly redose depending on the response. And then you've got the Mexican produced antivitamin. Uh, which is horse-derived antivenom. For the coral snakes, uh, we used to have a coral snake antivenom. However, there has been a shortage, and uh, actually all the last vials have been expired since April 2016. The good news is there is a stage 3 trial um, of the horse-derived antivenom that is ending uh, in November 2017 in the University of Arizona. So hopefully soon enough we'll have uh, coral snake antivenom develop, uh, available again. So some of the complications that can occur, uh, due to the snake bite you can get compartment syndrome which uh, usually is treated not by fasciotomy but uh, by administering the antivenom. Uh, you can get necrosis of the digit that requires amputation, and that should be done after demarcation occurs, so possibly weeks to months uh, after the actual necrosis. And um, wound infection can occur or necrotizing fasciitis. However, antibiotics are not routinely recommended for snake bite victims. And uh, the complications that occur can occur due to antivenom um, could be an allergic reaction, or serum sickness. So what is your disposition for a patient who sustains a venomous snake bite? So if they are asymptomatic, um, for the pit vipers, uh, you should observe them for about eight hours. Uh, if it was a Mojave bite, you should actually admit these people for observation for 24 hours. Um, for the coral snakes, admit for observation for 24 hours. If the patients are symptomatic, uh, most of these people should be admitted and some of them might be admitted to ICU. So a quick recap. Uh, we know that the scope of the problem is small in the United States relative to the rest of the world. However, if you are out there, you should know what to do if someone comes in with a venomous snake bite. Uh, pit viper venomations are, are the most common type of venom and venomations found in the United States. And uh, there's really no treatment available in the field, so you need to get these people out. Antivenom administration is the most definitive treatment. And here's my reference.